<laughs> you don't have to call him daddy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Reaction Time, where, first of all, everybody look at Eric's box on your screen, and then shame him through your screen for not matching the dress code. Oh, no. Dress code. Shame. <laughs> shame. Shame. If, Steven, if Eric wanted to not be in shame, how could he fix that? If you don't want to be shamed by your peers, you can go to the Funky Store, Funky.Store, and you can get cool merch that that makes you shameless and makes me shameless. So, Including we, we, these exact <laughs> shirts. These exact shirts. There's there's a there's a documentary comedy thing dropping on Netflix about Blockbuster, so you want to be prepared for those watch parties and, and watch along with that show. You pick up some nostalgia merch uh, at Funky.Store. You check that out. There you have it. Peer pressure. Get good. <laughs> anyway, we're here, as usual. We're here to talk about some League of Legends. So, uh, we are through the first two days of the group stage of MSI, um, which means we are through the first 12 games of the tournament, which we previewed heavily last week. And things have, I think, largely gone as expected. So... Steven and I aren't going to lie to you. We both have kids and have had somewhat of normal sleep schedules, so we haven't watched many of these games. So we're going to be leaning heavily on Eric's analysis on, on, my, on my reading of scorecards. I have so, watched some games, though. That. I'm ahead I'm ahead of our uh, esteemed host here. So. I just have to ask questions. I don't have to do <laughs> shit. <laughs> That's the beauty of hosting, baby. Um, <laughs> anyway, Eric, I will start with you. What is the single most surprising result from the first two ga days of games for you? Uh, I definitely loved the Red Canaan, Red Canids versus um, the first Red Canids game where they were playing uh, the P uh, PSG Town, um, where Red Canids end up coming away with a win, and it was actually incredibly impressive because uh, because their their early game was pretty solid, but then their mid and late game were were actually phenomenal and then also they were playing the game in a different kind of style where they actually had Jin ad carry and teton was looking great on Jin, and they were doing like long range engage comps and picks with it and it was actually really incredible and it was like the best game i've seen from uh, uh brazil or cb lol in uh, like an international tournament in a long time and they looked very solid also on the flip side psg talon looked very questionable and suspect which is like a theme that will continue going forward in future games steven what results surprised you the most um a pleasantly actually correct is uh having a a winless uh, psg talon actually like in, within that same uh, i think that's kind of the biggest surprise of everything i think that's the only thing that's not like as predicted is just having a winless psg um but my boys on fast pay wildcats uh going one one i like that that's a good trend that's positive um it, it would have been much more reassuring for red canids to have actually won their second game against a theoretically more difficult opponent for <laughs> me having confidence in them moving forward because <laughs> that's a very brazil on international stage result <laughs> To be fair, though, that, that Wildcats Red Canids game was real back and forth, was very competitive. Um, so, like, um, I still think either one of those teams could make it out of this group um, reasonably. And it really will come down to the second round robin. Uh, they're not beating RNG. <laughs> I, 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 I will take for my um, surprising result, I the biased fanboy in me did not think EG would drop both games to G2 and look quite as embarrassing as they did in both of them. However, I am brought joy by the fact that there was an Anivia picked in one of these two games. Eric, tell me about the Anivia. Um, uh, my favorite comment from during this game, or after this game from Jat on desk, is that Anivia was released when Jojo Pune was five years old. So, uh, so you know, he's probably got very little experience against the bird who is the word. Um, 
the Anivia was largely about setting up zones of control. They also like G two at like came into that game with like a very clear anti EG strat prepped, and they absolutely eviscerated them with it. Not just from the Anivia, but from like they didn't let them have other tanks with the rise for the front line, and then they would just like leave Jojo like walled into a death zone, and then like fight around it. And it was really brutal. Like, a very clear game plan, very well executed. And Caps is also a god. So it, it, it was pretty gross. <laughs> I also really like the Anivia pick. That gave, like, Zeri a lot of room to just, like, always get to that, like, farmed win condition point. Um, th- like, looking at it compositionally, I don't think there was ever a way that they would close that game out because I believe they had like an Aatrox and stuff like their scaling just was never going to penetrate the Nivea like farm funnel. And then Zeri just came in and clapped. And, and like, I saw some complaints about the rise pick for Jojo as well on the flip side of it. Cause I believe that was nerfed on this patch. Um, in addition to everything else it was nerfed but like it's still strong it's not like a huge problem it's just like it doesn't scale quite as absurdly into late game so like especially with the tank build which is what he was doing yeah and so like um and so like to me rather than like blame the pick and the nerfs i'd blame prep from g2 and having a clear like answering uh, strategy that there is no way EG could have seen coming. <laughs> um, yeah, because like there, there's a lot of anti EG stuff that G two shown in their th- two games they've played now. Um, two pike picks for Targamas. That was the other thing I was gonna mention, which is like we talked about in NA playoffs how like Danny would die in lane in the two v two and how it just wouldn't matter when they get to late. Well, um. Well, they're really it, abusing it the early game Danny dying in lane thing because that Pike pick has been absolutely destroying him repeatedly in lane phase. And they almost came back and won their second game after a throw at Baron from G2. And it looked like it was going to be NA playoffs all over again. A, a 7,000 gold throw, for yeah. the record. They were up 8,500 gold and that dropped in a minute by 7,000 yeah. gold. Because they got, like, four shutdowns and the objective bounty. So, like, it was really gross. Uh, but, like, but like uh, immediately after that, Broken Blade shows what carry top laners can actually do in these scenarios and, like, one-shots Danny, like, in, like, two team fights in a row to win the game on Camille. Um, so, like, this is what Summit should have done to EG in playoffs if they hadn't been internally combusting at the time. Uh, so it was it was pretty gross. And, like, uh, and team fighting from G2 just looked immaculate in both games. Eric, what's your favorite champion pick you've seen so far? Um, I, I'm a huge fan of Evie's Urgot. Uh, they didn't win with it, but it's just, like, so nutty. Um, the Silas counter pick into the Urgot, uh, into the Urgot Renata glass seemed brutal against DFM. So I don't know if we're going to see the Urgot before the mid lane pick or into Silas again, but, uh, that was the, the, the Urgot got way ahead early and looked absolutely nutty in that game. He was doing everything he could to carry. I'm waiting for Bio Panther to bust out Urgot. I believe he has a pretty decent one as well. Uh, Bio Panther, did Bio play the Poppy pick? Because yes. like Poppy's been picked and it did not go as well. Yeah. Um. <laughs> but but Urgot is always fun to see. I I think like MSI is always like the only time it shows up, and it's so funny to me that like ever since the rework, like he'll just like show up and a, a couple of players will play it at MSI or other international tournaments. And... It, it was Bio Panther in the game against DG. I will say playing Poppy into Gwen seems really unpleasant to me, in theory, even if you can deny some dashes. That's just, it's not as easy to itemize as it is into a lot of the AD-based top laners, and it just kind of feels bad. They almost did win that dragon fight, though, and, and win the game with when he yeeted, like, five of them out of, or, like, three people out of the pit. It was like, oh, wait, hold on. Wait a minute. EG's gonna throw here. <laughs> I do this the the detonation comp in the detonation Saigon Buffalo game that Eric's talking about. 
the the Urgot, Viego, and Renata possibilities around death are just delightful. It was really grody. Like uh like it, it did get to a point though where um where like Saigon Buffalo's mid laner just took over Froggy. Like yeah. did absolute wonders to keep them in that game. Uh very clear mid gap in that game, which was very sad. Yeah, like the game ends even on kills, but the team fights that you can tell where things just started to not work for DFM. And I guess mid gap isn't exactly fair because their mid laner did what he could, but he was twisted fate. So like when you get to that stage of the game, when it's just five V fives consistently, one of you has many more buttons. So, but yeah, I, I have been interested generally in the Samira priority that has gone way up. We saw a game of Danny. We see a game of it from team A's. What have you thought about what you've seen of Samira so far back into the meta? Is that the Eclipse one? The Eclipse build, Samira? Uh, I think we've seen a couple of different Samira okay. builds. So, like, um, the... I mean, I think it's I think it's good. Like, there's a ton of options for AD right now. It's, um... Which is, in some ways, good. In some ways, it's bad. Um, because... And what, what I mean when I say that is it's good in that it really creates interesting plays on the map. Um, it's bad in that I don't think AD is actually the focus of games right now. It's like very clearly not the priority role and the speed of these games. It's very solo lane focused in this tournament at this point in time. Um, so like we'll have to see how it continues to play out. Um, <laughs> this has been all three shield bow for the record. It's oh, okay, shield okay. bow and a collector and IE. Okay. It's cause like the, there, there has been a flex of playing the lethality build on more champions here with yep. the buffs to umbral glaive specifically. Like I've been seeing 80 carries by an umbral glaive first and it's like baffling kind of, but on the flip side, it's like, that's some good vision control right there. Um, so I don't know, like the, the AD pool does seem wide open and it all combos with different things. Samira is really good with Nautilus or like the short range knock up seat hard CC. But then on the flip side, there's Jin, who's really good with the long range knock up engage CC like Wukong. So it's like, which style do you want to play? Do you want to play safe, distant AD carry, who then can come in and clean up? Or do you want to play like short range, more burst oriented AD carry who's in the fight? Well, and that and that's the whole thing. Like, I, I just clicked to look at 11 different ADCs picked through 12 games so far is some pretty nutty diversity in picks like. You have each of Lucian, Samira, Ezreal, and Jin with three picks apiece. Uh, and then Tristana's been played. Trist twice, oh. Zaya twice, Aphelios twice, Zeri twice, Kaisa twice, Senna once, Misfortune once. Yeah. Is, so, like, there's plenty of options on the table. Is this some kind of, like, offset? Because I feel like, just given the teams that are at this tournament, like, it's a big, like, jungle mid focus as far as, like, your star power. And, like, is changing up, like, that AD carry position a way to keep your jungle mid synergy on comfort, but then change something up to show a little bit of variety and kind of catch people off? Besides what G2 did, where they did shake up the mid lane. I'd, I'd rather see, see, see that it's, like, teams, like, because of the nerfs before the event to Jinx, mainly. Um, but, like, uh, but, like, with the big prio ad carry picks getting nerfs like uh like everything's on the table suddenly and mm -hmm. no one knows what's actually good um and then coupled with that there's the fact that there are different very different personalities for ad carries at this tournament for like what are the champions that the good ad's want to play so you have danny who uh, who was a samira one trick you have uh you have gala who loves playing ezreal um, you have T1 who love Lucian Nami BS. I don't know if they've played it yet in this in this tournament. I haven't paid enough attention to their bot lane. But like, uh, no, they have played Lucian Nami. They lost lane with it against Oof. like Nautilus somebody. It was really funny. But like, um, but like, uh, but um, the point being is that like these, like you have these very different AD carry personalities in the, across these teams, and so they're like 
this like local meta hasn't actually fleshed out you know which team strat is the best yet so that it's all wide open which is great it's that's what i want to see i don't want to see every team trying to be knockoff skt in this tournament where where it's a turn it around you have big diversity in the bot lane and then you have the other lanes so in top lane eight Gwen picks is the most of any single champion through the games so far, and Gwen is six and two in those games. Fact number one. Fact number two. Ari has been picked five times and banned seven times through twelve games. She is five and zero oh through those five games. Nautilus has been picked six times and banned three times, so seventy-five percent presence, and is one and five. Mm. So. Again, there is a pretty wide skill disparity between some, between some of these teams, so you can't always take the win-loss as scripture. But Gwen getting picked this much again probably says that Gwen is back as your meta top lane. Viego being the most picked jungler, Ari being the most picked mid laner, and Nautilus being the most picked support by far over any other... And, like the the margin of them over any of the ADC picks is noticeable. So like there seems to be more clearly defined meta in every lane except for ADC. Teams have been pretty good at like banning problematic top laners or top laners they don't want in their games except for Gwen. So Gwen has been like the the like the most priority carry top laner that gets through against these teams. Like, Notably, not... Gangplank has been banned nine times and not picked by anybody. Yeah, because like, because like people don't want to play against Gangplank and they don't want to play against Orn generally. So like, uh, there's like a, a pretty clear prio for how this works out. There have been less Orn bans because teams have been opting towards carry tops. I have a feeling going into like you know tournament meta conversations that when you're playing a lot against Zeus and when you're playing a lot against Bin. <laughs> you're getting bodied by carry top laners quite a bit and broken blade. So like odds are people are going to be gravitating towards those picks and away from tanks in general, just because of their scrim experience against these teams. Like, uh, like there's like, I don't, you'd have to have some incredible me mental fortitude to like play against a scrim block against bin into broken blade and like lose to like Camille and Gangplank and Gwen on repeat and then be like lock me Orn uh lock me Orn in this stage game please <laughs> I can I can get through this like you know who's going to do it you know who's going to do it impact impact <laughs> yeah like it's it's impact but like but like a lot of these other top laners like that's that's some mental fortitude or resilience that's incredible and like you know, Bio Panther tried playing the Poppy or playing this tank into these comps, and it's like, it's just brutal early, especially since junglers have been prioritizing top side of the map and Rift Herald in general, because both SKT and uh, and Royal and G two focus Herald, not Dragon. So like, it's there's like a very clear winning top side narrative here. That uh, you that like really means you don't want to pick tanks. Um. So to to nudge at that narrative a little bit, here are the top laners that have been picked more than once: Gwen eight, Camille two, Aatrox three, Nar two. That's it. That's the whole list. People have tried a lot of other stuff. There are Lord. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine champions that have been picked once each in top. Lane. And there's also Gangplank who hasn't been picked yet, but is kind of hovering over this. And like teams have been banning Kennen in some of these games, like sometimes even early in pick ban to like get priority on picking like a safer Gwen pick or something like that. Like take yeah. the rat off Ch the table. Champions that have been banned multiple times. Gwen, Camille, Kennen, Rumble, Orn. The Rumble one is really funny. <laughs> the Rumble one's weird. 
there are certain teams in this tournament who have been winning a lot of games with Rumble off stage. <laughs> That's what that means to me. <laughs> yeah. the, the champions that have each been picked once include Kennen, Rumble, Orn, Jace, Mordekaiser, Poppy, Fiora, Gragas, and Herga. And the Rumble damage was gross. Like, <laughs> real grody. Um, but yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it, it kind of seems like Gwen and GP and then everybody else. I find it interesting still that GP was left open in three games and wasn't picked for something at such a high band priority. Yeah, it's mainly like, um, I don't know, like, it's not getting banned as, like, it's a power pick. It's getting banned as a, like, as, like, a setting the stage for your safe top lane pick. It's like, yeah. I want to play this, which means I don't want them playing I want to have fun in lane. <laughs> yeah. No pirates yeah, for what me, you please. What do you mean getting queued once every four seconds with passive proc in lane isn't a fun experience? I, I was playing a game with Alan on Rift like like a uh, last or a few days ago when he, he got that fun interactive experience in mid lane where the gangplank just walked up and queued. Walk him up, push Q, leave. leave. Yeah. It was uh Rinse it was repeat. real funny. <laughs> <laughs> Did he have some choice words to say about the pirate man? <laughs> said I guess I'm backing again that is what he would say <laughs> is there anything to glean from the S or the T1 games I haven't had any interest in watching them just because I know they're absolute claps um, so their lane their early laning has not looked as phenomenal as it did in LCK. I'm guessing it's because they're playing on ping yeah. and they're just not used to it. Cause like there are definitely some two V twos in bot lane, especially in their first game where uh Karia and Guma Yushi got outplayed in a two V two and died when they're playing Lucian Nami. Uh -oh. And it's like, that's, that's, that's basically unacceptable. And like, uh, and, uh, and, and so it, they, it, and so they go from that to picking Fasting Senna with Wukong in Game yeah. 2. Yeah. Oh, and absolutely bodying with it. So, like, the, I'm not saying they're in any way, like, you know... They definitely know they're better than these teams. Like, they, they clearly styled on A's. But, like, their early laning mechanics are not quite as crisp as they could be. Um, so that would be the weakness when they start playing better teams you do want to expect or see them get punished for. Um, uh, because, you know, like they just they have a little bit of weakness there. Uh, but yeah, they're like hard closing games. They're prioritizing Herald. They're getting absurd gold leads and then they're winning. Like, uh, they're, they like come online around 12 minutes is what it looks like. Right. So you're watching SKT play. Um, they might be even or even slightly behind in early lane. Then suddenly, like around 12 minutes, they hit like a 3k gold spike. And then you're like, well, what, what, what just happened? And then all of a sudden their 3k gold spike turns into their like 6k up. It's like 16 minutes and then the game's over. And it's, what the hell? Yeah. You know? how, how did this happen? <laughs> how could we have let this happen? I'm also interested that owner broke out the Kindred. Uh, yeah, that was... That game against A's was very clearly they wanted to style on them. Uh, that was the uh, that was the twenty one minute game. Um, it was it was brutal. Um, I I feel bad. <laughs> it's fair. I mean, I'm still interested that they showed those picks. They didn't need yeah. to do that. They didn't need to. Um, I think it's I think it's more they picked this stuff so that they didn't show what they actually want to do. Like this was full on. What you what do you want to play on the rift today? And then they they said their stuff, and then they just did it. And it was it's like that's that's the contrast. Then is like Royal now in their two games has played, or is or is the Wildcats game? They've played just super duper meta both games, like, and have won comfortably in both. Royal's like not minor. one to mess around, though, you know? Like, that's not really, like... So, yeah, they've, they've shown, like, minor weaknesses, but definitely nothing that can get punished by these teams. Um, uh, but they're and, also uh, showing nothing. Yeah, they're like, showing they, absolutely they, nothing. 
is it Galio? Like, are they playing Galio? I think Xiao has played Galio. Yeah. No, Xiao has played two games of Ari. Oh, oh, he's got an Ari two games. Gala, Gala has played Ezreal both games. Ming has played Brom Alistair. Yeah. Wei has yeah. played Diego and um, Volibear. Yeah. Din has played Nar and Gwen. Just meta as meta can be. And they'll just ride that the whole tournament. I don't see why they would yeah. change it up unless they get well, pushed in a best of five. Yeah, when they get knocked, when when we get to best of five, they'll show more. But like for this stage, not much. Yeah, especially teams will stop letting Yahoo play Ari eventually. Yeah, but he'll probably just but, like, do Twisted Fate or something. Well, I, I'd expect the Galio because like Caps has been playing Galio, and like the Galio actually seems pretty solid against these teams. It could be because he's been playing it against EG and. Uh, in order but like uh but there, there are definitely ways that there are definitely picks here that are in jahu's wheelhouse that he can play um besides the re well and, and what's what's interesting is wildcat's book on royal was to try to ban ming out which is an interesting move it didn't work like, people are, like, terrified. They were talking about it in coverage that people are terrified of his karma pick for some reason. Yeah. Like, they just don't want to lose to Ezreal karma. Banned ban both games, yep. Yeah. And it's like, but... But Ari. But that's not what Royal do. <laughs> Royal, Royal have Ming move to the other lanes. But teams are just so terrified of just getting outlaned they... by Gala and Ming that they have to ban the karma. Also, and Royal drawing a Wukong ban phase one is interesting to me against PSG. Yeah, like, I think... So, like, the the Wukong pick in the jungle is, like, a, is really strong, and teams just don't want to play against it sometimes. Well, and, and also like, bot lane Wukong, though. Yeah. Like, well, like the we bot lane speak. with Senna... The, the bot lane with Senna is also a thing, but, like... Not as much. <laughs> like a it's lot more teams. Seen it this tournament. Yeah, well, but they've been playing in jungle one. too. Like uh, other teams have played jungle Wukong with like the Jin uh, in bot lane. That's uh, Detonation Focus Me played it in jungle, and I think I don't remember if Saigon Buffalo did or somebody else. But like there have been other teams playing Wukong in jungle, and that's been kind of one of the expected roles for it too. In addition to like the the bot lane, it was thing. Red Canids in the win of okay. PSG. Yeah, like, yeah, and it's like that long-range engage combo. Uh, so it's strong. You can play it in jungle. You can play it in bot lane. Um, like, I, I I totally get teams wanting to ban it with what it's doing on the Rift right now. Um. <laughs> no, the only consistent thing against Royal is Ben doesn't get to play Camille for reasons. Yeah, don't, don't let that happen. First ban. <laughs> like... Like Ben would love to get to play Camille or or, or game playing. Yeah, yeah. I know about Ben GP. Please no. <laughs> <laughs> no, please. I'm having PTSD. <laughs> Double lift. Where are you? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> so, like, I don't think we need to go too much deeper into this. Do you? I still feel pretty good about where my predictions are for this. Like, it seems like G2 has set themselves clearly as the favorite in Group C, which is fine. Does like, EG take a game off G2? I think they'll take one. One? I think they'll take I one. I don't think so. I don't think so. I, I, think it, I don't think so. <laughs> I think G2's going to throw one. They tried to throw one today. I think they sure act, did. I think they're going to actually throw one. That was as close as they're going to get. Like, <laughs> no, they're going to they're gonna do it. They're going to do it. Do it that again. <laughs> He's going to have to burn his merch and, and like, please. Well, and, and again, the, the thing I've said this whole time, like, this is the best possible experience this roster can get, even if they catch fat L's in all four of these games. They need to figure out how to do this. There's the background issue of the fact that their drafting coach is stuck in quarantine and can't be with them on stage, which sucks, but isn't an excuse. So, like, they're they're working through what they're working through. And as Eric said to begin this, G2 clearly had a plan to deal with them that was at least somewhat replicable. So now they've got to go back to the drawing board and try to figure out, okay, how can we respond to this? Because we don't see that matchup again until day five now. We'll see it twice on day five. But 
like they've got a couple of days off functionally. They play EG plays Order first game of the day tomorrow, um, and then they're done for that. And G two plays Order in the second game, and then they're done for a day. So like I'm gonna be interested to see what EG has for those last two games. Um, against G2 to see if they've got whether it's a draft solution or a gameplay solution something that they've because they've got the data now right like they've got two games to work with and prep on and figure out like how can we make this work what can we do almost getting to play a full best of five against the same team that's spread out over multiple days it's a great prep opportunity to figure out. so like I'm not worried about them at all I still think they're going to get through fine to the next stage so take advantage of the learning opportunity let's do it do they drop a game to order though? No. Okay. Order looks terrible. No. Oh, they, they they look real bad. Looks, order and A's are terrible both. Which we knew going in, but yeah. like I would lose it. I would just be like So like a part of the problem is that when you think about upsets from these minor region teams, the main way these upsets come through is like early game massive snowballs. Right? So the problem is, is that when Order is drafting Jungle Karthus and Top Poppy in their different games and stuff like this, Nothing they're not happen. drafting snowball comps. So, like, their actual chances of, like, getting those, like, upset victories is, like, e- effectively nil. Like, in addition to playing better, they would also have to play very differently. <laughs> like, build a different comp, come in with a different strategy... And then try and go from there. So, like, uh, their odds are nilch. Uh, like, A's may be able to get a win off of DFM. Maybe. But, like, unlikely. <laughs> uh, like, a- A's Buffalo tomorrow. Like, like if you look just at the games that are in, like, six hours, right? Like, it's it's G2 and EG playing order first. I don't expect either of those to be interesting. And then it's PSG Wildcats. PSG haven't looked up to it, so that's worth watching. It's Royal Red Canids, probably not very interesting. Saigon Team A's, probably not very interesting. T1 DFM, probably not very interesting. Yeah, but tomorrow's like, going to probably PSG, be the, the PSG Wildcats game is the most interesting game tomorrow by far. Yep. And then we get into the second set of group games. Which, like, the day four is, this must, I assume this is group A, probably. That's the BSG Red Canyons Royal Wildcats group. Like, there's there's some interesting stuff there. We've already seen teams drop game each, like, BSG Town's the only team that hasn't won a game in that group. So, like, they're, that that's going to be an interesting day, too, to watch. But then, like, I don't, I kind of hope that the, the group C, Day five isn't very interesting because I don't think it's going to be interesting in a good way for EG if it's interesting. <laughs> there it is. There's that's that's what I want to hear. <laughs> and then like, yeah, like it's it is it is the good and bad part about this first stage is like the skill disparity between the the six teams that are going to go out of this stage and the ones that probably aren't. There's a pretty clear. Like the main, the top four from the major top regions look like they are the top four, and then it's two spots up for grabs. Other than those, especially with PSG looking weaker. Yep. Because like in prior years, there'd be like five to six top form teams going into the next round, and then it gets more interesting, you know. But like it's the second seed v, um, VCS team, and PSG talent had like a huge. Uh, like talent drop off and like Hanabi wasn't playing in one of their games for some reason. So like it's, it's looking, it's looking pretty, pretty clear cut top four now, which is, uh, which is really good for NA, but, (laughs) but like, uh, is, is not necessarily good for games that are interesting. So there you have it. The next time we record, which will be in a week, um, we'll have our top six for sure. We'll see if anything was more interesting than we thought it was going to be, which it could be, it could not be. And then we'll get ready for the the second stage of the groups, 
in which, as an NA and EG fan, pain awaits. <laughs> <laughs> pain. Pain. Suffering. Stay and suffer for a while. <laughs> and again, and again, like, to go back to the original point, they should probably get fourth. If they don't, it'll be a problem. Do I expect them to get higher than fourth now that I've seen them against D2? <laughs> I really hope they fix it, though. I think there's some opportunities to, like, come back really strong. I would love if they took more than a game off of G2. That would just be meme central station. See, the thing is, they're going to lose every game to G2, but they're going to take a game off of Royal. Hey, there we go. There we go. Like, it's possible. Like, um... Unlike their matchup against I'm G2, just saying, they have Royal, some... Royal, Royal has given up a 16,000 gold lead to an NA game in an MSI before. Anything like, is possible. Like, they also have really good, like, lane matchups against Royal that they don't have against G2. Mm -hmm. Inspired against Wei is Royal's actually... Good, yeah. Royal is the good matchup for them. Yeah. 100%. It's like, Inspired against Wei, I really like Impact into Bin as, like, a general concept. So, like... I think they have a good matchup there. Um, it might not matter because uh, Zhao Hu v versus Jojo is uh, some spice. <laughs> who was it who tre There was somebody who tweeted who's Zhao Hu. Like, who was that? It was probably Jojo. Yeah, like, but I'm thinking like like last year at MSI uh, or something. Was it Blabber? Somebody, somebody had like a who's Zhao Hu post or something and it might have been Jojo. I don't remember. The point being is it's not <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> yeah. Yahoo's very good. <laughs> no. Oh, wait, this was when Yahoo was in top. Yeah, I think it, it was more of a, like a top, top, top mid. <laughs> Who was it? Somebody had like a Who's Yahoo post or something and then got wrecked. <laughs> I'll have to think about was it. He, was he when he came back to mid lane and then just bodied someone? <laughs> No, it was he was in top lane. Okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. So there you have it, Steven, What you been playing? Uh, I'm trying to quest back up to to Master Quest. Um, one of our buddies, Dan, on the channel. Uh, he he got to play a game against uh, Spraggles, which is a big uh Pokemon Unite YouTuber, so I'm like extra feisty. I'm like, dang, I, that could be me. I could be in the upper echelon of Pokemon Unite again, so I'm like extra, extra into that. Um, but otherwise than that, yeah, just kind of just kind of poking around at some other games. Not, nothing too interesting right now, honestly. Eric, what you been playing? So after queuing up as, uh, as Phil on normals, it got 10 games before I got a lane that wasn't jungle, and it was suddenly mid lane. So that was cool. I got to play Vex for like the first time on Rift and had a Quadra almost pentakill and got an S minus and got my box for the split. Awesome. Other than that, I played a lot of Jarvan. Um, Jarvan you know, day. Yeah. Um, I want to play AD now, though, and try this Umbral Glaive first nonsense. Um, but yeah, we'll see. I'm playing Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go. My mom's back on Pokemon Go. She got a new phone, so she got it, got back into her account. She's like, I'm sending you gifts and open it. It's like, no, not you two, not my own mother <laughs> complaining about me not opening gifts. <laughs> not like this. Look. I'm just No. Just gonna just gonna look this up on the chat right now. Stephen G hasn't opened my gift. Hasn't opened my gift. Yes. And we're two yes, days away from being best friends. I opened it today. This... What are you talking about? I made I sure to do you. it because I was... A... I sent you a new one. <laughs> well, that doesn't... No, that's not... I'm waiting podcast. for the next day. No. No. This no, this isn't fair. I've tried to avoid this exact circumstance. <laughs> Get ducked on. No, I refuse. No, this is, this is a loophole. <laughs> Bodied. Anyway, last thoughts. Uh, we watched this just before we recorded. Steven, give us your expert designer opinions on the, the C9 Jensen roster announcement. Oh, I think this is the way you had to do it. Just, like, embracing every facet of why people are, like, like not hot on Cloud9, but being like, this is us. We are we are ascending into the, the, the cult, of, cult of 9. It's Cult 9 now. I love it. 
Eric, did you enjoy the video experience? Uh, Sneaky was in it, so yes. <laughs> Sneaky weeb. There you go. All right, we'll be back next week to talk the second group stage of MSI, and we'll see where we're at. Okay, bye. Okay, bye.